Hello, I'm MTG Josh and welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy today's Rizona Agro build. Okay, I don't mind the starting hand. We have a pretty nice curve, Soul Stealer Axe with a creature that gives us a land with some removal, and a lovely Jeru and Hazaret to finish off and hopefully give us some advantage along the way. Yeah, this is pretty good. It's quite inconspicuous. It doesn't seem like it does much. They do have a lot of synergy with the Witch's Oven though, because Smeagol cares about creatures dying when they do. You can get to, to activate this ability, so it's a very strong deck. Do not underestimate Smeagol here. But we do now have an indestructible Rosona, so it has protection from a lot of powerful cards like Fatal Push. Most two mana black spells that say destroy doesn't protect it from minus minus abilities though, or exile of course, or sack, or there's there's a lot of actual ways to kill this ironically enough. Okay, so we have the abrade. So I think we're gonna abrade Smeagol here. And then we can even get an equipment with the fighter class, which is pretty damn cool. Malakir rebirth means it's coming back. That's kind of annoying, but I think we'll attack with the Rosona. Do we care about taking four? No. It's fine. Oh, Sword of Foreign Ice. This is going to be sweet. We can hit with this. We get to deal two damage to any target. So we can aim that at Smeagol's face and hopefully take care of him. So now Rosona loses Indestructible, so that is a downside, but... I didn't really want to just lose the ambitious, ambitious farm hand there. So now they mill us to the hit of land. Oh my goodness me. Look how many powerful... Oh, removal central there. So it's a 2-3. Maybe we can force them to block. Death touch. Hmm. We'll give them a choice, I suppose. Do they want to kill the Rosona or the Ambitious Farmhand? Or neither, perhaps. Interesting. Okay. So we get another card to hand. Adeline. Sure. I would kind of like another removal for Smeagol because they're going to ramp into some big things here. Pretty unfortunate they had a Death Touch here as well. Return a card. And then Tempt. Oh my goodness. Just an uncommon, but this uncommon is crazily good. Every time they Tempt, they get a land. That's kind of OP, right? Is it me or is that kind of broken? I feel like that's kind of broken. In one rotation, they managed to tempt three times. Jeez. Okay. Let's get an equipment here. What can we get? Something cheap and cheerful, maybe. Mall's pretty good. Are we going to lose Rizona, though? So if this connects, we're going to get a 5 drop to hand as well. Abyssin, pretty good. So that's going to be nice to flash in in the following turn, if we get another turn, that is. Because they've got a lot of synergy going on here. And also, if they get to stage 4 of the ring, whenever they deal damage to us with the ring bearer, we're going to lose 3 life. One black mana gets a creature back and tempts you. Wow. Okay. They're tapping for a lot here. I think the flavor for Smeagol's decent. I guess it, when something dies, it reflects that he's traveled all that way. He's journeyed all that way. 
Primeval Bounty. Ooh. They play a land, they get three life. They play a Nung Creature spell, put three counters. And a Nung Creature spell gives them a 3-3. Three, three. Wow, okay. That's a lot of things. Haywire Might. So they're going to be able to... Exile a Nung Creature... Artifact or enchantment. Okay, so they're probably going to go for one of the swords. Goodness me, the synergy they've got there is ridiculous. So it only costs one mana to do this as well, which is kind of crazy. Well, I guess we've got to make him do it, right? I'd be very surprised if they didn't use the Haywire Might here. And if they get rid of the flying, we, I think we're just going to flash the Avacyn in to make our team indestructible. Okay. Which one is it going to be? Okay, so now we see if they want to block. They do. So here comes Avacyn to protect Rosona. Nice. Okay. It was slightly better here, but... Now we can kill the Smeagol as well, so that's good. And we have Indestructible again, and the Ragavan, that's a lot of triggers. So if they have some kind of board wipe, we might be in trouble. Green, black, could be anything, right? Meat Hook Massacre. We are currently threatening nine in the air. We are very close to lethal. Zariel could come down making that nine, 10, 11. And if we had enough mana, we could give Ragavan haste, but we need another red source for that. My goodness, that primal bounty is going to kill us, isn't it? Jeez. That is crazy. That is crazy. So can we do this and... Plus one. Plus one. I'm scared. Okay, I'm scared. Trample, pro red, pro blue. I think we do do this. Do do this, actually. And then we can go for Adeline and Ragavan. Which is pretty insane power level here. They can gain loads of life, though, so we have to be cautious. <laughs> Let's swing in with the team. Heroic Intervention. So they're going to give all their stuff indestructible. But don't forget, if we lose anything, Avacyn will flip. Okay. Damn, that Intervention came in clutch, didn't it? But with are down to five... And we've got all these triggers. I think they're they're actually dead. Yeah, because the when the Avacyn flips, that's going to be three damage to them, unless they can gain some life here. Oh, and we have a surge of salvation as well. So when this flips, three damage to each other creature and each opponent. They die unless they eat a food. And she's indestructible after all, so that's why she didn't die. So they, they don't actually die. They'll be at three as long as they eat the food. Three damage to everything else. Oh! They didn't go to full control. Oh, that feels really bad. They could have responded in response to this right transform at the beginning of the next upkeep so they could have responded to this by using the witch's oven to sacrifice the beast and then they could have gained life but they already had a food anyway so they could have just paid two to gain three life that's an interesting mistake to make though i thought they were a really good opponent to be fair but yeah i guess not going to full control meant the game didn't give them priority there which i feel is a bit strange unless they skipped which would have been even worse this hand had a lot of potential. 
us going first with the Lord Warhammer, though, that is not happening. This one is... I mean, it's not great, let's face it. It's pretty slow. At least we've got the Signet. If the sword does die for any reason, we can return it with the Danitha. But because they're mono black, the only way the swords get in the bin is if they discard other Thought Seas. Okay, two equipment is pretty sweet though. Especially with the Aurelia. This could be a pretty explosive end game for us. They've got double black open. Let's try and get the Rasona. So many kill spells they could have. If we get indestructible, I'll be pretty happy. I just don't feel like it's going to last for much longer. Orcish Bowmasters. Huh. Okay, and now what? Will they block? I mean, we don't have ways to draw that many cards. I always forget Orcish Bowmasters as a card because it's so incredibly BS. It does... 300 things flash, body, extra body, one damage to anything whenever we draw more cards. It's just silly, really, how powerful that is. Blue's indestructible, okay. And what else are they going to do here? Swift up boots on which one? The Bowmasters. Okay, that's fine by me. Land after land after land. Sword of Fire and Ice, keep that to the Rosona. So at least we can deal with these silly goblins. Okay. Oh man, that's annoying the way that works because that means we kill it and then... So we kill it, and then they get one back. Two damage, and then draw. Damn it, if it was draw first, it would have worked any other way. But Oh, that's a shame. Duress. Well, there's nothing to duress. That was lucky. Oh, and we have the Aurelia as well. Do we have any kill spells? Crucible of Worlds. We've got a self-mill strategy. Okay. Right. So what do we do? If we give this trample, then things are looking even juicier. Okay. We, we now can't go for the Danitha, but... Eh. Down to 11. They have no lifelink, remember. So we might as well just start doing it to them. And, okay, so I would love for Arizona to survive longer, but I just don't know. If we do get the Aurelia out, I think it's game over for them, right? Oh, interesting. They're going to go for the gamble. Wow, they really don't care about their life total, do they? They do know we have Aurelia, right? I'm curious at what at what they're gonna do here. We have double combat and trample. Although I know that they're gonna they're gonna kill the Rizona here, but we get the tr we get to attack again with the uh, with the Aurelia for three, so. So they die in their next turn. So we also have haste with Rosona, remember? Do we get lucky here or do they have a kill spell for the Aurelia? They're going to need one. Malachia Rebirth. Interesting. Takes them to one. I take it they've given up then. Could we have a sporting opponent? Meat Hook Massacre. 
Interesting. But didn't that make him lose life? Okay, I'm a bit... That was strange. <laughs> that was really strange. I feel like they shouldn't have done the Malakir rebirth. That was just silly. Because I could have just got enough to kill the... But then they wouldn't have had a blocker, would they? With the Rizona. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Is this a good starting hand? Well, we have a SRAM with no equipments. We do have Restoration, which I do like, and a Removal spell, so I think this is decent. Also, Jeru and Hazret lets you get Legends off the top of your deck as well. So this could be okay. Well, the Gix is going to have a lot of Hand Disruption and Removal, being Mono Black. And this is a really powerful card. They're looking at Rizona. Rizona isn't very common. Haven't seen many people use her. And obviously the set's coming out so fast these days. Hard to keep up. Finally decided. Cool, let's go. Turn one. Dread Malkin. So yeah, there's tracks. Everything they they basically want to have a perfect curve. So turn one, turn two, turn three, gicks, and then when they start attacking, they're gonna basically replenish the hand very quickly. This has menace as well, so we're not gonna be able to block it very easily. Just realize that's a regular cat with Lazatep plating. Blood Chief's thirst smacking us here. We can actually get this round back eventually with the restoration. If we want to. Skyclave. I think we'll save that for the following turn. So they're probably going to go for Gix one way or another. Whether that requires sacrificing the Malkin. Or just playing a Swamp. And then in our turn, we're just going to use the Skyclave Apparition to get rid of the Gix. So they'll get one card out of this exchange. But hopefully we can keep them at bay a bit. Okay, so as predicted, swing in, lose a life, and they draw a card. Nice. So do we really care about SRAM with no artifacts out? Um, but conversely, we don't have anything to use with Nahiri either. So basically swapping Nahiri for SRAM, I think that's okay. We're just getting a little bit of advantage out of this. I find it unlikely that we were going to cast the Nahiri anyway without any equipments out anytime soon. Yeah. And this way, if we do play any small equipments early, we will get to draw with SRAM. Whereas, Nehiri gives you that advantage, but only when you already have the equipment. So she's the opposite end of the scale, really. But, nevertheless, by herself, she's a very powerful commander. And they are passing the turn. Interesting. Oh, no, okay, so they're going to attack. I wonder if they do have any removal. They do have five cards. Mutaval open. Unlikely that they're going to block with this, though. What are they thinking here? They want to kill Sram for the second time? I mean, this is the thing. We don't have any equipment, so in a way, it's a pretty good bait spell. But they really don't want us to have that, do they? That's actually fine. That works out pretty fine. Unless we draw an equipment here, in which case... Sad times. Okay, so we found fifth land. So we could go for Jero and Hazaret. But won't have haste. Now, because they killed our SRAM with a single point kill spell, I think we're just going to go for the Rizona here. I feel like it's unlikely they have a board wipe. When there's a lot of pauses like this, I don't know. I don't know what to think. They've already seen Rosona. And if they wanted to kill our creatures on board before Rosona resolves, and I don't know why they're waiting for Rosona to enter the stack. Who knows? Who knows what mysteries await us? Yeah, 
It's interesting to be roped this early in the game, when the opponent actually has more life than a starting turtle. You don't expect to be roped, I'll be honest. Ever since Worlds of Aldrain pre-release came out, man, that faced a lot of ropers. Three ropers in two days, that's quite a lot. Okay, so we finally resolve the Arizona. And we get a hit in. That's going to be good. Oh, they're going to sacrifice for two black. Which kills ballads are going to be? There are many. There are many. Tragic slip. That took a long time to process for them. But there we go. Now they don't have any creatures out to draw cards. Apart from the Mute Vault, but then they'd need, they'd need two other lands to even... What? Another kill spell. Okay, so it's just kill spells in the hand. Jeez. Good thing we have Jero and Hazara then, because if we have one of fewer cards in our hand, as Vigilance and Haste, are they going to regret killing all of our stuff? And they still have mana open to do something. They, they can just activate the mutable, but it'll be tapped. I mean, it's a bit odd. Okay, so the opponent finally passes, and my goodness, I don't really see the point of continuously pausing the timer when they can't. They literally can't do anything here. And then choose to tap the mutable there. I, I don't know why. Could have done that in their turn to save some time, but sure. J opponent just who knows? Who knows what's going on there? So we have an indestructible Arizona. It doesn't protect it from minus effects though. So they have something like a languish. Or interestingly enough, the March of Wretched Sorrow would have actually been able to deal with Arizona. Knight of the Ebon Legion, that's a tempting target for the fragment reality because they won't be able to get any creatures back because it's already one mana. So, Biting Palm Ninja, okay. So if that hits us, they get to discard a card from my hand. So let's just get rid of the Knight here. They can always use the Frexian Tower in response, but that's not really going to help, I guess, if they wanted to, some, to have something in their graveyard. This doesn't have... This has got Menace. Eh, I don't care, they can get rid of the Salt Partition if they really want to. How are they going to deal with the Jero and Hazaret? Vigilance, Haste, and an amazing attack trigger here. Or oh. well, at least we hope so. Look at the top six cards of our library. We can Exile Legend. And in turn 10, we can cast the Exiled Legend without paying its mana cost. There's a fair few. Especially when the format gets older, there's just more legends. I have to say, this opponent is very unsporting. Constantly making me just ponder life. Ponder life and what lies before us. And they're probably just going to concede at some point anyway. So why not just concede now? Okay, we're probably going to miss here. Oh, we get Boromir. That is probably one of the best things we could have hit because it protects our team. Something I find interesting is the way Wizards decides how triggers work. So for this one, for instance, the creature comes to my hand and I can play it later. But there are some triggers that just say Exile and you can cast there and then, like the old Itali. Ironically, if the opponent had a Boromir, they would have actually countered our Boromir because it wasn't cast with mana. So that's somewhat ironic. And yet, if they have a Languish, we still lose our whole field, so we're not that safe. All that only for the opponent to quit anyway. Hello there, and welcome to the deck tech for Arizona, Asari Commander. It's an interesting um, aggro build because she's not definitely a, an equipment based deck she more she just cares about smashing face to be honest she has haste 3-3 three, three, and whenever she deals damage to a player if she doesn't have an indestructible counter on her put an indestructible counter on her and then whenever another 
creature deals damage to you, remove an indestructible counter from Rizona. So against control, she's probably going to always have indestructible. So getting one hit in with her is going to be awesome, especially for giving her swords and some really cool equipments. So the deck wants to have a few things that support having equipments. And that's why we've got SRAM in the deck to let you draw a card whenever you play one. And obviously we've got the Nahiri who can create core warriors and then you can attach equipment to it. Look at the top six cards of your library. You can reveal warrior and equipment put into your hand. And then minus three can kill things based on the amount of warriors you have out and or equipment. So that's pretty cool as well. We have Danatha Benali's Hope, which resurrects a equipment from your graveyard or you could put one into your hand equipped her so that's pretty awesome she's already got a first strike vigilance life link body so she's amazingly big for that we're going to try out the new awin who comes in and exiles a creature with great greater power it's a pretty decent ability not really seen her that much so she's pretty good to put an equipment deck as well because she has haste and she can attack imminently draw Kadeen's nice it's a very easy to cast creature and then whenever you attack uh, it gets plus one plus one to the turn where it's the number of equipped creatures and then if Jorkadine's power is four greater you get to draw a card bear in mind you don't need equipment for Jorkadine to actually be good it just cares about power buffs so things like flowering of the white tree will also just trigger it because it's on the field and it's a legend it'll get plus two plus one so if you have flowering of the white tree and Jorkadine that's pretty good because you'll always be drawing a card whenever you swing in we've got three of my favorite swords in the format once in future forge and frontier fire and ice the probably the best swords in the format which would just do so much damage if you just hit a few times you're going to be golden obviously put this on a double stri strike creature like twin blade geist and you can get double hits with it so that's pretty awesome as well akiri fearless voyager lets you draw cards whenever you attack with one or more equipped creatures so you get the point lots of equipment lots of ways to draw cards and lots of ways to smash face on the upper end, we've got Nahiri, who's one cheaper for each equipment you have out. And then when you attack, you get to look at the top cards of your deck and you get to play equipments without paying the mana cost. Kind of crazy, kind of broken in the right decks. And already the War Leader tops things off by letting you have double combats, which is just insane. If you can get to her, good luck to you. Six mana is going to be pretty tough because people are going to be shutting you down very, very quick as soon as they realize you're an aggro deck. But yeah, the deck list will be in the description below. If you've enjoyed today's video, why don't you drop me a like and why not subscribe to the channel because it really supports me. And thank you for doing that. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.